It's Saturday, March 25th, 1911, in Greenwich Village, New York City. Here's the Ash Building. On the 8th, 9th, and 10th floors, the Triangle Waist Company manufactures women's blouses, called shirt waists. This crowded, dirty factory employs 500 workers, many of whom are young female immigrants. They work six days a week for $4 per hour in today's money. Just after 4.30 p.m., a fire breaks out on the eighth floor. Panicked workers rush toward the exits. Two staircases lead out of the ash building, but one is engulfed in flames, and the other is locked in order to prevent worker theft of company property. The building's elevators are warped by the heat, rendering them useless. Terrified employees rush to their last hope, the fire escapes. But the main fire escape is flimsy and collapses under the rush of people. The secondary escape is locked in order to prevent unauthorized worker breaks. Trapped between a growing inferno and the windows, many workers leap to their deaths. Others perish in the flames. All in all, 146 workers lost their lives. This disaster revealed a number of problems regarding industry in urban areas. These problems deeply impacted the American working class. As our top detective, you've been assigned to an important case. It's your job to identify the issues that led to the Triangle Shirtwaist Factory fire. You have case files to examine, each with a guiding question at the end. Why and how did governments support industrialization and urbanization? How did industrialization change business practices and affect workers? What societal problems developed as a result of industrialization and urbanization? And our essential question is, how did people's lives change as a result of industrialization and urbanization? Okay, history detectives, time to get on the case. First, to get some context for our investigation, we need to understand the link between industrialization and urbanization. Industrialization is the transformation of a society from an agrarian economy to an industrial economy. Urbanization is the process of increasing the concentration of people in cities. As industry in the U.S. grew, it drove the growth of cities by creating jobs and attracting people from rural areas. Urbanization, in turn, provided the necessary infrastructure and workers for industries to thrive. New York, home of the Triangle Waste Company, was already a large metropolitan area. Factories were attracted to New York due to its population and resources. The city's population grew from 600,000 in 1850 to 7.8 million in 1940. For the government, all of this was great. Industrialization contributes to economic development, creates jobs, raises living standards, and makes the nation more competitive on a global scale. The government recognized these benefits, so it encouraged industrialization in several ways. First, the government improved infrastructure by constructing canals and railroads. Just up the Hudson River, the Erie Canal was built to connect New York and its factories to the market in the Great Lakes region. Additionally, it introduced protective tariffs, or taxes, on imported goods, which meant that they were more expensive to buy. For example, consumers were more likely to buy blouses from Triangle than, say, ones made in London. The government allowed for influxes of immigration to the U.S., which filled the labor need for Triangle and other companies. Finally, the government avoided regulations that would impede businesses, such as controls on safety, pollution, and treatment of workers. For example, the Triangle Factory did not have to reinforce the fire escape or ensure all exits were clear and unblocked. Before we close this case file, let's answer the first guiding question. Why and how did government support industrialization and urbanization?
Industrialization and urbanization changed life tremendously. Let's pop in the time machine to see how. First, we're off to New York City in 1790 to gather clues about what life was like before mass industrialization. Let's take a look around the city. The Ash Building won't be built for another 110 years. And what's that? Looks like a sheep got loose? Yep, there are actually farms in New York City. We're on Wendy the Weaver Street. Shall we say hi? Wendy is a small-scale artisan who weaves textiles in her workshop and sells them locally. And those sheep? Every year, Wendy shears them, collecting the finest wool for her clothing. Once she gets the wool, Wendy cleans it and weaves it into finished items, like this stylish shirt. Then Wendy sells the items out of her workshop. Wendy gets to keep the profit. After all, she's the only one who works here. Keep on weaving, Wendy! Ready for our next trip in the time machine? Let's go to 1910, just a year before the Triangle disaster. We'll visit Edna the employee, who works at the Triangle Waste Company. If you look outside, there are no farms left in New York City. The sheep are sheared miles away in rural areas. The wool is shipped to the city on trains. In the factory, Edna is one of hundreds of employees. She makes the embroidered lace that is added to the garment. Tasks are focused and repetitive, so Edna gets to be extremely efficient at her task, despite being unfamiliar with the rest of the textile-making process. In fact, Edna has never even seen a completed shirtwaist made at Triangle. Once the clothing is made, it's circulated to stores in New York and shipped off to a variety of cities all along the East Coast. While Wendy had some freedom to choose when to work, what her product will look like, and how much to sell it for, Edna has no such freedom. She works long days for little pay, as her boss wants to profit as much as he can from her labor. Wendy's workplace was relatively safe. Edna's factory has many safety hazards, as safety precautions cost the company money. So, now that we've gathered some more evidence, let's head to the case file and answer this question. How did industrialization change business practices and affect workers? So, detectives, we're forming a picture of how industrialization changed business practices and why the government supported the process. But these changes got people thinking, is this actually good for society? Let's put some of the negative effects of industrialization and urbanization under the old magnifying glass. First, industrialization led to stark economic disparities. While some individuals and businesses amassed great wealth, most people like Edna and her co-workers at Triangle, faced low wages and long hours. Second, laborers had to work in dangerous conditions. The Triangle factory, like many others, had many workplace hazards and was ill-equipped to handle emergencies. Employers made this problem worse by enforcing policies such as locking emergency exits to prevent theft or employee breaks. Third, rapid urbanization produced overcrowded cities. With a lack of space to build, factories, such as Triangle, were crammed into the upper floors of tall city buildings. This made it harder to exit in case of an emergency. Overcrowding also led to unsanitary conditions. So, now that we have a handle on some of these issues, let's answer that last question. What societal problems developed as a result of industrialization and urbanization. In 2001, the last surviving member of the Triangle tragedy, Rose Friedman, died at 107. A Jewish immigrant from Austria, Rose was only 17 when she nearly lost her life in the fire. When reflecting on it, Rose said, It's not fair because material and money is more important here than everything. Rose survived and spent her life fiercely advocating for workers' rights, among other things, namely 
learning seven languages, saving the life of a spy in World War I, starting an accounting career at age 64, and showing her paintings at local galleries even after she turned 100. Uh, yeah, so pretty much an American hero. While Rose made it, how many future American heroes lost their lives in this tragedy? Events like the Triangle Shirtwaist Factory Fire challenged working Americans to not only petition the government to take action, but to take matters into their own hands using labor unions. But that's for our next lesson. Until then, like Rose, keep making history. Hey.